Welcome back, and this week we will focus on long haulers and some of the treatments that have been shown to be effective with long haulers. First of all, I want to uh, just make everyone aware that there is a long hauler tracker system. It looks at all of the long hauler uh, clinics and what they're doing around the world. And so we'll put that link in the, in the description below. And so I would really recommend that you go there um, if you're experiencing these long hauler symptoms and see, what's, see what the clinics are doing, see, see what people are doing around the world, what they're using to treat, etc. Also in the link below will be um, a long hauler registry. They have some really interesting things to say uh, you can register with them and find out a lot of information with regards to long haulers. Um, I would really, I've looked at it and it's really, uh, it has a lot of information and a lot of support uh, for, for people who are experiencing these symptoms. I was listening to Dr. Fauci the other day and he was stated that the antibodies that we have in our bodies may not, will not be 100% effective against these variants. And so there's gonna be, it'll recognize it, but there'll be some decrease uh, in uh, the neutralizing uh, activity of the antibodies we have. So all of this information is kinda, you know, and people are hearing it and don't know what to think. We have people that get infected end up having long haulers. And so I want to talk about the medications, a couple of medications that deal with long haulers. And one we've talked about <laughs> a lot, ivermectin. Yeah, I know you probably have heard about it in the news. And um, we, we gave you studies that showed that ivermectin works prophylactically. Ivermectin also has been shown to be effective in long haulers. The most compelling study for me was with the Peru, uh, where it decreased mortality 70-80%. What are the other medications that people are, are using for long haulers and having good response? One is fluvoxamine. Uh, fluvoxamine is indicated for um, obsessive compulsive. It's a psychiatric medication. However, they have found that this medication significantly alters outcomes with, uh, in those patients with um, COVID-19. Again, it's not indicated for COVID-19 right now by the FDA. Um, however, there was a study done in JAMA, journal, the Journal of American Medical Association. They did an article uh, that showed significant benefit when fluvoxamine was used in patients that had COVID-19. I wanna go through the mechanism of action of fluvoxamine. Fluvoxamine is considered a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. So in other words, it inhibits the reuptake of serotonin. And people that don't have enough serotonin, they uh, can have brain, mental health uh, problems, obsessive compulsive, anger easily, depression, uh, anxiety, and that's why fluvoxamine is used uh, in those patients. So essentially we have more serotonin in the brain. And so that's one of the mechanisms of, ser of uh, fluvoxamine. This is one of the medicines that it does cross the blood-brain barrier. In other words, it does get into the brain. COVID-19 goes up the nostrils and gets into the brain. And we know people uh, lose taste and smell. So the virus gets in. And so also this fluvoxamine can get in too. And it can work on the serotonin and try to get a balance of serotonin in the brain, which we can kind of see how that could ultimately help a person who has been affected with uh, neurologically with uh, brain fog and numbness and tingling, depression. If you have more serotonin around, that would be a good thing. The second mechanism of action, and I think this is the one 
uh, that really helps out with patients that have COVID-19 is that there is an enzyme in our cells, endoplasmic reticulum. Don't worry about the big word. Uh, worry about the enzyme that's in the endoplasmic reticulum. There's that enzyme, uh, IRE1-alpha, is, is an enzyme that's there when activated causes more cytokines to be released. So what fluvoxamine does is it activates a protein called sigma protein. Sigma protein blocks IRE1-alpha, the enzyme that we just talked about that causes the cytokine to be increased. It blocks that. So if we're talking about in the brain, and we know that a lot of people, uh, these long, lo a lot of long hauler patients talk about brain fog. And so, so if we block the enzyme that causes inflammation in the tissue in the brain, then, then patients feel better. And they do feel better in the, in, in the, in the clinics that are using fluvoxamine um, as one of the kind of standard things that they're doing along with ivermectin, they are seeing that patients actually have less neurologic symptoms. So the last thing I'll say is I want to remind you about the, the article that was done in JAMA, the Journal of American Medical Association, uh, with fluvoxamine that showed really uh, uh, compelling evidence that fluvoxamine helps in patients that um, have uh, been infected with COVID-19. I'm encouraging you to go to Dr. Patterson's website and, and go down and get registered. Talk to your doctor, talk to the people at the clinic about the use of ivermectin and fluvoxamine in long haulers because it's working. It's making people feel better. And so, and that's what we want to do. We want to get people better and we want to give people more uh, options in terms of getting better with this COVID-19. Please leave any comments in the section below. Give me a like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next week.